Hey game developers, Bilal from Zenfinity.net and welcome to another Unity tutorial. In this video we're going to learn how to drag and drop items in an inventory interface using Unity's UI features. So just go ahead and download the project files up here in the top right or from the description below. And let's move some loot right now. Okay, to give you an idea of what we're going to be creating here, there's a video in front of you that shows how I'm dragging and dropping these items around in an inventory-like interface. Alright, let's get started. Alright, so welcome to the editor, and if you haven't already, make sure you download the project files by clicking on the card in the top right or in the description below. And what we're going to be using are tags and just one c -sharp script in combination to allow us to drag these UI elements. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and go into our canvas here and we see four objects called inventory tile. Now we want to tag these somehow to make sure that we can actually only interact with these draggable items. So I've already set up a tag here called UI draggable, but if you, hit, you haven't yet, make sure to just hit add tag here and then set UI draggable. Okay, so I'll click UI draggable so that all four of these get set to UI draggable as a tag, and I'll hit save by pressing control S. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new folder here called scripts, and I'll hit enter to enter that scripts folder, and I'll right click and press create C sharp script. Now we'll call this C sharp script UI element dragger, and hit enter, and let's go ahead and double click that to open it. Let me drag this over here, and what we're going to do is have some functions here to basically find our game object that's underneath the cursor. And we also want to make sure that we know which game object that we're trying to move the object to. So, in other words, replace its position. So why don't we go ahead and start with listing out our attributes here. So we have a constant which refers to that tag that we just wrote. Draggable, draggable tag. And a constant is just something that can't be changed after compile time, so we can only set its value once. The convention in C Sharp for constants is an all caps variable here. Okay, so in here we'll write UI draggable, because that's what our tag is called. And we have another function that tells us if we are, or sorry, a boolean that tells us if we are dragging or not. So we private bool dragging equals false. Okay, and now we just want some references to the object we're trying to drag, and we want uh, a reference to the original position before we actually move this object. So let's go ahead and write a vector2 here. Original position. Okay, and let's also have a private transform object to drag, which is what we're trying to drag. And we'll have an, a reference to the image attached to the object to drag because we want to, oh, that's the wrong image, image, uh, make sure that you include unityengine.ui here. So if you hit control period, it will allow you to do that fast, or you can just type up here using unityengine.ui. Okay, so we'll write object to drag image. Okay, and at the very last, we want to store all the objects that are under our mouse here. So list raycast result, which is also going to be excluded. So we want to hit control period here and then hit or double click using unity engine systems here and it should pop up up here or you can just manually write that in. Okay so raycast result hit objects equals new list of raycast result and we'll have a semicolon there. Okay now let's go underneath this model behavior API I have set up here and let's actually create one function to find an object under a mouse and then another one that will detect a draggable object specifically. So one that has that tag that we're referring to. So I'll make a private game object returning function here called get object under mouse. And oh, sorry. And in here we'll first store a pointer uh, da event data. So there pointer equals new pointer event data and we'll use event system dot current so what this is doing is just storing some data from the unity event system which was employed for the UI system um, that we're going to need later for uh, storing our pointers position and then recasting from there 
So let's go ahead and write pointer dot position equals input dot mouse position. Okay. And now we can raycast from that pointer's position here. So we'll do event system dot current dot raycast all pointer and then hit objects. To explain what's going on here, basically we're going to raycast at the position this pointer is at. So we're just checking what's in front or under the cursor uh, with only UI elements. And then over here, when we store hit objects or when we pass hit objects as an argument, that just means that we're going to store every single raycast result inside of that passed array here, or list rather. Okay, so now that that's all set, we don't want to do, uh, we don't want to return a game object if obviously if we don't have any objects that we found. So if the count is less than zero, let's just return null here. Otherwise, we want to return, and we're going to need another include here in a second, the first game object. So we call dot first using system dot link. You can also write this as hit objects of zero. For this purpose, I'll write dot first um, dot game object. So that will just return the very first game object, and we only want to return the first one because that's what's going to be um, the object in front of all the other objects inside of the raycast result list here. Okay, so private transform get draggable transform under mouse. And what this function is going to do is, of course, return the transform of an object that matches our tag here. So let's write another var here clicked object. And actually, I'll write game object to make this more clear. For those of you who don't know, a var is just a, a variable that will change depending on what's on the right at compile time. Um, so equals get object under mouse. And now, um, because we're using our function here, we have a game object that just returns that top level UI element that we clicked on or that was under the mouse. Um, so here, let me check if the clicked object is, oh, this should be called clicked object, sorry, is not equal to null, and clicked object dot tag is equal to the draggable tag. So if we have that, first off, if it exists, and then if it has the appropriate tag, then let's return that thing's transform. Okay? Otherwise, we're just going to return null, <laughs> because uh, obviously there is no object that we clicked on here. Okay, so yeah, these are these are going to be called whenever we click. Uh, we'll, we'll directly call this one, which we'll then call this one. Uh, and we if, there, if we're not over a UI element, obviously we'll get a null object back, which means we're not going to do anything. We're not going to try to drag anything. Otherwise, we will be trying to drag that object. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to our update function here. I'll delete our start function. And let's do a check for if we click. So this first part is going to say if input dot get mouse button down. And what that means is if we clicked one of the mouse buttons here, specifically the zero width mouse button, which means the left mouse button, then we want to store this object to drag, get draggable transform under mouse. And now we just want to do a null check because as we said, we want to make sure we're attempting to drag something before we drag it. Uh, so if object to drag is not equal to null after calling that function, then we want to set dragging to true, obviously. And we want to um, make sure that our object to drag is the last sibling of our parent here. Because to show you what I mean by that, I'll drag this over here for a second. If we look at our panel here, we have four inventory tiles that are the children of this panel. So basically, whichever one we're attempting to drag should go to the bottom because the way that the UI system works is that the item at the very bottom is going to be rendered in front of the rest of them. Okay. So basically, uh, we'll just set as the last sibling here, and now we'll go ahead and store what the original position was of this object to drag because we want to change the position of the other thing we're trying to drag it to. So that position. So original position equals where our object to drag is as soon as we click. And then object to drag 
image, so this reference to our object to drag's image component here, is equal to object to drag dot get component image. Okay? Uh, and now the very last thing we're going to do is make sure that we cannot detect this image that we're trying to drag here. So we want to turn its raycast target to false, which means that we cannot see it uh, when we use these functions over here simply because when we let go of the mouse, we're going to want to put this thing down and we need to find out what is under that thing we're dragging rather than the same thing that we already are dragging here. So that'll make sense in just a little bit. So if dragging, then object to drag dot position equals input dot mouse position. And that's all we have to do while we're dragging. And actually we can go ahead and visualize this right now in Unity. So what we just did is set the position as we update. Uh, and just before we hit play, actually, um, let's go ahead and drag this UI elements thing onto a camera here, or a script, I should say, rather, and hit play. And now we should be able to make any of these just go where our mouse position is. Now, we'll get an error if we click again. But just to visualize, if we click once, then the thing will keep following our mouse. And let's go back to Visual Studio here. And what we're going to do next is make sure that we let go of this UI element here. So with that, we want to check if we lift the mouse button here. So if get mouse button up zero, which of course is doing the same thing here, but kind of the opposite where we're letting go of the mouse cursor or the mouse button. Um, and what we want to do here is first let's set dragging equal to false. Okay. Now above this, let's go ahead and check if our object to drag exists here, or if we're attempting to drag something, then we need to store something that we want to replace the other one with. So let's check transform object to replace equals get draggable transform under mouse. And that's of course our function that we wrote down here, and that'll just detect the other thing that's under our mouse. But in this case, since we set our object to drag's image to not a raycast target, that means that it will completely ignore the thing we're holding and go past through it and hit the thing that we're trying to put our object to drag onto, which is obviously another object to drag, hopefully, inside of our inventory here. Okay, so now let's check. If object to replace is not equal to null, which means that if we actually are putting this on another draggable image, then we want to reset the position object to drag that position should equal that object to replace his position okay and now we want to flip flop them so let's set the object to replace that position is going to equal that original position that we stored whenever we clicked on an object before we started dragging it okay so now if this thing is actually null here. So I'm going to write an else. So um, we don't have something we want to replace. Then let's just reposition our object to drag here. Original position. And that way, whenever we drag it somewhere weird and we let go, uh, then we won't have it staying just sitting out there. We'll actually send it back to where it was originally dragged from here. So now let's type an object to drag image that raycast target equals true so that we reset its raycast target so we can drag it again. And the very last thing I'm going to do is object to drag will become null because we do not want to do uh, something weird with it when we're not actually attempting to drag it here. So that is actually everything that we're going to need to do. So if we go back into Unity and hit play, then we should be able to just replace with any of these, no matter where we put them. And of course, if we were to duplicate one of these, and I could even drag this thing over here, and that works just fine. All of a sudden, I've added a new inventory item during runtime, and it still works perfectly. So that is actually going to be it for this tutorial, guys, and I really hope it helped you out. And if it did, make sure to hit that like button. If you want more tutorials like this, then make sure to hit the subscribe button and there's going to be a lot of good stuff. Now if you want to make your first game right now, hit the card in the top right. It's a book on how to get all the tools to make your first game. 
completely free. You click on that card and I'll send it to you immediately and I will see you in the next video.